Welcome to the gap. This is gap. They should have never gave you platform. Yeah, we back. We back. We back. Yeah, we back. We back. We back. Yeah, we back. We back. We back. Oh, yeah. I know y'all miss me. Well, some of y'all do. Some of y'all probably didn't miss me at all. They like, damn it. I'm glad he was gone for a week. Well, god damn it. You know what I was doing? I was fixing up the studio. You feel me? What's good with y'all out there? This is another episode of The Gap. I'm your lovely or hated host, Kamal, a.k.a. The Black Seinfeld, a.k.a. Magic X. Hey, I got the best audience out there, so y'all know what y'all should be doing, right? Well, what you waiting for? Give yourself a round of applause, people. Look, if they watching, at least they learning. And I appreciate all y'all, from the ugly to the beautiful and to the in-betweeners. And God damn, it's a lot of in-betweeners out there. Holy Harriet. Wow. Holy hell. Mm -hmm. But for my tubers out there, though, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video art channel booming. But just like the rest of the tubers say, I'm going to say the same thing. Like a sub. Sub a share. Share a comment. Comment a like. Y'all know what to do. Some of y'all smart out there, you feel me? Hey, for my potters, though, I'm on Google Podcasts, I'm on Apple Podcasts, and I'm on, uh, uh, I was about to say SoundCloud, not anymore, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, across all those platforms. All you got to do is type in The Gab or Kamal Johnson ENT, and bam, I'll pop right up. Hey, I appreciate my sponsor, First Place Losers. They got new drops. Y'all see it? Yeah, you got... What money? We ain't gonna say that name because they ain't gonna get nothing, but you know the slogan. You know. If you black, you heard that before. You ask for some money and your mom or grandma or whoever older than you in the store is like, you got that blank money? Anyway, new drops. You feel me? I appreciate them. This is my sponsor. Link to the shop gonna be in the description below. Y'all go check out the fire ass garments made out of 100% Egyptian cotton. I guarantee a boost your sex appeal of about 13%. And look here, if it look good on me, it's going to look good on your in-between ass. Okay? All right, let's hop right into the show. And uh, yeah, today, you know what I mean? I want to talk about, look, us as straight black men, I'm tired of the narrative that we hate the LGBTQIRS whatever community. I'm tired of this narrative that, like, we, we, we hate them. We don't hate y'all. That's bullshit. That's like a perspective that they trying to throw out there when it comes to straight black men. And I'm tired of that shit. We do not hate the LGBTQ community, bruh. You feel me? And I know I'm late, but it's because I didn't shoot last week. You know what I mean? Because I was getting my, my studio together. Okay? You feel me? Got the new picture. You feel me? Everything on. Anyway, uh, the Gabrielle Union thing. The NAACP thing, you know what I mean? Gabrielle Union with D-Wade and D-Wade, uh, daughter, you feel me? And stuff like that. And the thing about it, her speech, when she was trying to reprimand the black community and black stuff. Come on, man. We know what this she, she was trying to reprimand. She was trying to reprimand black men. You know what I mean? There's a running stigma that straight black men just have hate and visceral Towards the LGBTQ community. And no, that is far from it. That is <laughs> false. That is BS. And it's like, dude, I'm tired of that being the narrative. Because it ain't true. Putting up against each other and stuff. This is what I don't like. And this is the problem. Whenever we talk about black issues, whenever we talk about issues when it comes to black people or the black community and stuff like that, it seems like people try to either put us against the LGBTQ community or it seems like some people from that community have to be like, well, what about us? Oh, y'all be hating on us and 
what about our rights and this and that? And it's like, bro, wh why? Or if you notice certain politicians, you know what I mean? Like Ron DeSantis, little ugly ass. He be trying to link us up together with the LGBTQ uh, community when it comes to the issues. And you like our issues are totally separate from the LGBTQ community. Now, another thing is that gets on my nerves and it puts us against each other is let's talk about the black people in the LGBTQ community. First of all, I'm tired of the perception that your sexuality comes before your race. Okay? It's not true. It's not true. Your race comes first, no matter what. Your race comes first, no matter what. You feel me? And I'm tired of like, like, bro, let's be real, man. Like, we don't really care about your sexuality at the end of the day. You feel me? We just don't. What I don't like is, is that you try to be like, well, you try to be like, either I'm gay first or lesbian first. And you try to just not seem like you a black person first. That's the boy malarkey that we have a problem with. That's the horse shit. Okay? You're black first. Then your uh, sexuality come into play. You feel me? One person I want to shout out that really gets this concept and is really fighting for us as black people and our black issues is Marcel. He's a congressman in North Carolina. I'm going to keep praising bro because bro is homosexual, right? But he know he's a black man at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, he's fighting for black first. You feel me? Then comes the sexuality. Okay? Not just sexuality first, then black. And another thing that be happening in the LGBTQ community when it comes to the black people that they try to sweep under their white rug is there's a lot of racism going on within that community between the white LGBTQ community, the white, Asian, Spanish, whatever, be having, be racist toward the black LGBTQ people in that community. I'm just saying. And so you see how like perception, the media, and how it goes. And it's like, yo, real talk, we not even fighting with y'all like that. We just want y'all stop stepping, stop stepping on our toes when first when when if you're not black, you're stepping on our toes and you're trying to conflate that LGBTQ community issues correlates with black people and black community issues. They don't, you know what I mean? Some might intersect, but for the most part, they're their own separate entities. You feel me? Second is that there is racism within that community itself between like uh, white, Spanish, Asian, but I'm going to use white for now, against black people. And it just irks me when black, when black people in this community, not all, I just mentioned somebody, you feel me? But it'd be some, and it just gets pushed out there where it's like, they view their sexuality first and then their race. And that's a problem also. And then it makes it seem that us as straight black men, and it is some straight black men out there that be doing the bullshit and y'all be on some shit. Oh, oh, you gay? I can't, I can't F with that. But it's like, bro, what you, like, what? What you mean? Like, bro, who care about their sexuality? Do you want to have sex with them, bro? Jesus is that what it Christ. is? You trying to dilly day deadly, huh? What? Yeah, I made up a new word, but God damn it, if Webster can make up bullshit, I can too. You feel me? And everybody think I'm like, bruh, y'all y'all really be out here like some 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 straight black men really be out here and it's like, bro, you it's not gonna affect you, bruh gay or this person lesbian or this person transgender, whatever. It ain't gonna affect you, you feel me? But the key word I said, some. Cause most black people that I know. And most black people that like I have conversations with or encounter with or I see on the web, they don't have a problem with the LGBTQ community. You feel me? I don't I don't have a problem with them. You feel me? It's just I stated a couple things that I have problems with that get like exacerbated, you feel me, 
through just media and stuff like that, and then make it seem like straight black men seems to be the center of attack of us being seen as like we're the ones that hate this community when we know that's not true. You feel me? It's BS. It is BS. How to be doing that? You feel me? God damn. It's cold in this motherfucker, man. I need to get my heater working again. It's goddamn cold. Yes, I'm about to wipe my nose. You feel me? God damn. Cold as hell in here. But yeah, we got to dead that narrative. You feel me? Got to dead that narrative. You feel me? Got to dead that narrative. Because it ain't true, bro. It ain't true. And I'm tired of it. And Gabrielle Union, the reason why I, I'm picking, you know, I picked this because the way Gabrielle Union was talking at the NAACP award and how she was kind of trying to reprimand, you know, black community. We know we know who the smoke was for, man. It's for straight black men. Come on, man. We know what it's for. And it ain't true. This is bullshit. This is BS. You feel me? I ain't, I ain't for it, dude. I ain't for it. You know what I mean? And this narrative got to stop, yo. This narrative has to stop. You feel me? Man. I don't know what's going on, bruh. Golly. And yeah, I, know, I keep looking at my phone. You know why? Because my timer messed up. It crapped out on me, so I'm not able to use the timer, so I have to use my phone. But who cares? Neither here or there, you feel me? At the end of the day, the, the sources I got, you feel me? You know what I mean? Life. You know what I mean? History. Because this has been this has been an ongoing thing since I've been alive. That straight black men, we have a we have a problem with the LGBTQ community and shit like that. We don't got no motherfucking problem. It's a couple of bad apples sprinkled here and there, and through media and shit, and you see it is just exacerbated. Of course, if somebody see that shit, they gonna be like, "Damn, bro, yeah, straight black men don't like don't like that community, did it?" No. And at the end of the day, let's be real, man. Us as black people, you feel me? But I'm gonna stick to black men. Us as black men, how we communicate? We communicate through shit talking. And you wanna know who gets this? Who's in the LGBTQ community? And I know that they get this because she done said it on a Breakfast Club. Flame and roll. She gets it. We talk, we just talk shit. Okay? Don't be so sensitive about it. There's no hate to go along with it. We just talking shit. This is how this is our communication, you feel me? We talk shit to everybody. If a motherfucker got a short leg, we gonna talk shit about that short leg called a nigga hip hop. What? Hobble time. Oh my god. You feel me? If a chick got one titty bigger than the other, you feel me? We gonna call her, we gonna call her Biggie Smalls. Jesus Christ. God damn. We talk shit. You feel me? If a motherfucker zesty, we gonna call him Zesty Pop. What? Okay. We don't hate you, that's how we talk. Niggas talk shit about me all the time. They say my nose is big. They talk about my light skin. One time, a motherfucker called me Albert Niggastein. Oh, my God. <laughs> Albert. <laughs> Niggas die, bro. This is how we communicate as black people, especially us as black men, you feel me? So this is why I, I, I wanted to bring this up. We need to change that narrative that us as straight black men do not like the LGBTQ community. That is not true. That's far from it. It's just that when we talk about us, Black people in our black issues, one, we don't want it to, you know, conflate with LGBTQ community issues because they have their own separate issues. So I hate when it get aligned with it. You feel me? Just, no, we got our own stuff. And it's like, you know, it's, it, it seems that when we talk about issues, why does it have to bring up, like, why is that being brought up? Second, it's not all black people in the lgbtq community because i just mentioned somebody you feel me marcel bruh congressman north carolina you feel me doing it right for our people but you understand it's black first actually in the, in the grand scheme of things your sexuality shouldn't matter but since racist bigots make it matter then yeah it, it does matter but it shouldn't be 
sexuality first, which some black people do in the LGBTQ community. It shouldn't be sexuality first. Okay? It's race. You're black first. And that causes infighting. And we don't need no goddamn infighting. At least not with that. I think it's dumb. I think it's dumb infighting when it comes to that. You feel me? And I, I just like Gabrielle Union, the way she was trying to wag the finger. At the end of the day, bro, it's like, bro, real talk. And I'm going to leave it at this. Y'all ain't respecting the uh, the, 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 the biological uh, uh, mother of that child. Think about it. And y'all know what's going on. I'm going to let y'all ponder on that. You feel me? All right. Enough of that. Oh, snaps. We about to get into the SAF segment. And uh, today, oh, y'all know what I'm about to talk about today. It's, it's a hot topic in the streets. Hot stand up in the streets. Chris Rock, selective outrage. Rage, 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 rage. Yeah. Y'all had to talk about it. Everybody talking about it. Man. You feel me? All right. So, you know, Chris Rock had a new stand-up called Selective Outrage. It came out uh, yesterday. You feel me? And, you know, it was addressing some things. And before I get my spill on it, let me give you the stats since I'm a stat teacher. Look it. Uh, oh, they just fixed it. Oh, this wasn't here earlier. Oh, I don't got to see if they got it on the computer. So... When I was looking earlier, Rotten Tomatoes didn't have a score yet, but now it does. So, IMDb gave it a 7.3 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 60%. And the people gave it an 88%. I'm more of, I agree with all y'all, so freak y'all. The reason why I agree, because, like, my score, I gave I gave it a 6, you feel me? Like, Chris Rock has some funny-ass moments, you feel me? And then some moments was just very dull and very, like, cringy, in my opinion, because it's like... The, the subject matter he was trying to touch, I'm like, uh, okay. Or like, you know, some things just say, I'm like, okay. Hmm. All right. But then he had some funny ass moments, you feel me? And I, I could see I could see it being 60% because, you know, some people would be like, I ain't, I don't know, I ain't really, really rocking with it too much and stuff like that. But I could see, like, if you're a Chris Rock fan and you really love Chris Rock, you'll give this a high score because it was funny. He addressed things that you wanted him to address. You know what I mean? Like the Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith shit, which I'm going to address it when he addressed it at the very freaking end of the stand-up. Pretty genius. Great job. But, essentially, Chris Rock had his stand-up. He had... And I, the chain was tight, too. He had the little Prince chain. I see you, Chris Rock. Okay. But he was just talking about, like, one of the things he talked about, he talked about Elon Musk. Uh, how like he don't have no more skeet because you know I guess every day he getting ha 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 walk walk three three thousand you feel me because uh, I guess the things he produced okay cool one of the jokes that kind of got people feathers ruffled was the Michael Jackson R Kelly joke because R Kelly got convicted of that crime while Michael Jackson he didn't get convicted of the crime so he was innocent. So it's like conflating those two, and it's like, really? Hmm. So I asked some people, like, bro, you gonna use that? All right. And then what some people saying, because these type of jokes is like, they say that Chris Rock tries to appease to a more white audience. You feel me? And, um, I mean, I can't really argue with that. That's, that's motherfuckers' opinions. You feel me? He had another joke where he, uh, he, he ratted out his daughter to humble her. Commend you, brother. Yeah. Humble your rich daughter. That's what he did. He humbled her because Chris Rock grew up poor. I mean, y'all see everybody hate Chris. You feel me? It, it was a best out of New York or some shit. Yeah. He grew up poor as hell, but his, his daughters are grown up rich. So he had to humble her because she did something faulty at school. And Chris Rock was like, yo, kick her out the damn school. I need her out. You know what I mean? He also addressed kind of like the transgender identity issues. It was kind of funny, though, because he was like, he saw a show where the lady was in a relationship with a caterpillar or identified as a caterpillar. <laughs> ah! 
I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, okay, now that's hilarious. You feel me? What else did he talk about? Um, he talked about uh um. The main thing was selective outrage. Like, people are selective with their outrage. That was his main point he was trying to get across, you feel me? Um, another thing he uh he talked about was, um, he talked about, what was the thing? It was something in the um, beginning. I ain't gonna lie, the first five, ten minutes was, was really not funny to me. That's why I can't really remember it. He had some jokes, but it was just kind of like, mm, whatever. It started to pick up, though. And I was like, okay, it's starting to get funny and stuff like that. Okay, mm-hmm. I think a, another thing he talked about was, um, I'm trying, there it goes, the Meghan Markle thing, where he was saying, like, Meghan Markle, you're not really facing racism, you feel me? Even black people be worrying about the shade of their babies and stuff like that. And you want to know something, Chris Rock? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know because I don't have a kid, you feel me? Some of my other homies have kids, but I'd never hear them. Ask that sentiment of how brown their baby is going to be. So I'm going to take your word for it. And hey, man, it's, he was saying, like, Mega Mark, you ain't really faced no goddamn racism. You got lucky, really. You light skin. You got light skin luck, basically. <laughs> I, I kind of found that funny talk. Like, all right, bruh. All right. And he was basically saying, the royal family is the original gangsters of racism. They, the OGs of it. So how do you not expect racism? From this family, which like, okay, Chris Rock, I get that. That, that was kind of funny. You feel me? That makes sense. So that was another thing that that was another big thing that he talked about in his stand up where I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Okay. You feel me? Then the um he's touched on one more thing that uh it was one more freaking thing that he, he touched on that Besides the Will Smith and Jada Pika Smith, I'm going to get to that. But, um, damn, that's what they all talk about is a slap. There's one more thing. In the comments, let me know in the comments below, what was the other big thing that Chris Rock talked about in his stand-up, minus the Elon Musk, Meghan Markle, his daughter, um, the Michael Jackson, uh, R. Kelly thing. And the Will Smith Jada Pickett. There was one more thing. I can't think of it right now. But let's hop into the Will Smith Jada Pickett Smith thing where, you know, Will Smith slapped the dog shit out of Chris Rock at the Oscars, which will be a, a year from today, next week, or this Sunday coming up. And uh yeah, he addressed it. So how he addressed it was basically he was saying that y'all look it, y'all put your business out there on the internet that Jada Pickett Smith was having sexual relations with her son's friend. You feel me? Which nobody ever talks about a bird had mental illness also. So I'm, I'm going to leave that nugget right there. But yeah, he was saying that like, yo, it's, it's, it's evidence. She did this. She the one said she had an entanglement and then ha like, you know, had your business all out there. And you had your business out there too. And everybody was calling you a, a biatch. From like Charlemagne the God, you feel me? Called him like a bitch and shit like that. To uh, other people was calling him just calling him like a bitch because of this. They were calling him out his freaking freaking name. And essentially, Chris Rock was literally was like, "Yo, bro, like I'm a fan of you, bro. Like I liked you and shit." And he was just like, "Yo, like these was jokes towards your wife." And I even mentioned the whole Gorge. thing, and then he. He brushed on like how they had beef on the prior Oscars about like, yo, you talking about I should quit my job and not host it, but you're not here. Like, what are you talking about? And then the main thing he also was saying was like, bruh, you're a bigger dude than me. You play Muhammad Ali. You, you do shows with your shirt off. Nigga, you dope. You feel me? And shit like that. And out of everybody that's been calling you a bitch and all this stuff or whatever, at the end of the day. You come and slap the hell out of me. I'm small as hell. He said he played hooky in New Jack City. And yeah, you saw him with straight that boy was skinny. Skinny man. God damn. <laughs> Just imagine Will Smith, Muhammad Ali, slap the hell out of Pookie for New Jack City. God damn. Hey, I kind of commend Chris Rock because he ate that slap. 
you would think he'll slap the hell out and knock him out. But he was saying that, and it's like, you know, Chris Rock got every reason to be angry. And the last tad bit where I'm like, oh, damn, this is bad on Will Smith. Chris Rock said that he tried to actually reach out to Will Smith, and Will Smith booed him. If that's true, then it's like, God damn, bro, you looking bad out here, bro. And then, like, literally Chris, Chris Rock was like, you know what I mean? Was like he basically was angry, like, bro, you slapped basically somebody that probably can't whoop your ass at all. You you took you took that out on me, who was a fan of you and everything like that. And it's like, bro, this is BS. And the only okay, I I agree with all that. You feel me? I found some of that funny till the very end in the last goddamn s- s- uh, sentence. I was like, oh no, not that. And I know some of y'all out there. You, Dim wits out there gonna be like, oh, you talked about the, the thing when he said to raise his parents and Terry Ray. No, I get that. That's fine. He said that his parent, he, he was raised right by his parents, not the you know attack back and stuff like that. You feel me? Uh, shout out to to, to Chena Arnold and uh, Terry Crews. <laughs> you get the joke because everybody hate Chris. They were the no. Stop it. I should stop. Okay, I proceed. <laughs> No, but the very last thing he said, and I was just like, oh, this is freaking cringy, bro, was literally when he said that they taught me not to fight in front of white folks. I hated that line. I'm like, no, no. Because, like, what it implies to me is that is that white folks is better than us as black people. Everybody fights, bruh. Everybody fights, Chris. See the double entendre that I did there? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, everybody fights, and I did not like that line. Like, he could have left that out. He made it, he put white people on a pedestal right there, in my opinion. What? Not the fight in front of white people? I wouldn't mind if you said not to fight in front of rich people. Because it's hella rich people in that goddamn audience. It wasn't just only white people. It was black people in there. You feel me? You put white people on a pedestal with that line. And I did not like that line. I did not like that. And that was the very end. And I was just like, bruh, Chris Rock. With that line alone, you, you, you lose a point on my Richter scale. Even though you probably don't give a damn about my Richter scale. But you lost a point, brother. You went from a 7.5 to a damn 6 with that line alone. Because that line most definitely made it seem that white people are better than black people. And we can't, we get into arcade. We can't fight in front of white folks. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta not fight in front of them. We gotta care about what they think. I'm like, oh, man. That line right there was just, but other than that though, yeah, man, I thought the, I thought, uh, I thought the stand up was pretty pretty solid though. That's why I gave it a six. Literally, I get I gave this shit really an eight. But that line right there knocked off two points, and I was just like, man, dog, you didn't need to say that. You didn't need to say that. Come on, Chris Rock. Damn it. Golly. But yeah, man, this has been hot in the streets. Everybody talking about it. You feel me? So you know I had to talk about Chris Rock. Selective outrage on Netflix. You feel me? And look, man, y'all go watch at your own accord. You feel me? Uh, with that being said, like I said, hey, that that last line was just, oh god. Mm. Anyway, y'all know what time it is. Oh, we it is meme time. time, and I got some juicy memes for y'all. You feel me? And, you know, the topic we talked about, you know, the LGBTQ community and stuff like that. And so I had to get, I had to get a gay meme. <laughs> and it got bro looking zesty, bro. He got like a, a, a neon green highlighter a wife beater on. You know what I mean? Or it could be a bathing suit. I don't know. We got the jeans on, whatever. And then read, and bro got his hand. He's like, hmm. And it reads, gay jokes aren't funny. Come on, guys. What? But it's, it's, it's come with the minus the uh, uh, 
the, 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 the O and the E is, and replace it with the U, it's the C U M come. <laughs> come on, guys, Sublish! Oh, wow. Huh. I'm talking about Chris Rock and Will Smith, so I got, you know what I mean? With Chris Rock and Will Smith with the slap! And it reads Will Smith clearing up a question I've had since childhood. Now I know why paper beats rock. <laughs> And it got Will Smith on like hand circled after the slap. You feel me? Golly, Jesus! Now I got another meme, and it's Will Smith. You know, and it got at the top. It it reads, and he's happy as hell. He says, "Will Smith, when someone smashes his wife." Then the guy Will Smith at the bottom, angry like ah, and it says, "Will Smith, when someone tells a joke about his wife," and now it's. All Chris Rock sentiment on his stand-up was you being very macho and tough against me, telling a joke about your wife, but you all buddy buddy with the mother effer that slapped them cheeks from your wife. Mm, mm, mm. God damn. Spicy tuna. Spicy. Tuna. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm back. I appreciate y'all, man. I got the best audience out there, so y'all know what y'all should be doing, right? Well, what you waiting for? Give yourself a round of applause, people. If they watching, at least they learning. And I appreciate all y'all, from the ugly to the beautiful and to the in betweeners. And God. Damn, it's a lot of in-betweeners out there. Holy Harriet. Jesus Christ. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Once again, this is another episode of The Gab. I'm your lovely or hated host, Kamal, a.k.a. The Black Seinfeld, a.k.a. Magic X. Hey, from our tubers, though, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video art channel booming. But just like the rest of the tubers say, I'm going to say the same thing. Like a sub. Sub a share, share a comment, comment a like. Y'all know what to do. Some of y'all smart out there, you feel me? Hey, for my potters though, I'm on Google Podcasts, I'm on Apple Podcasts, I'm on Spotify, and I'm on iHeartRadio. Across all those platforms, all you gotta do is type in the Gab or Kamal Johnson ENT, and bam, I pop right up. You feel me? I also like to thank. My sponsor, first place, Losers. The link to the shop going to be in the description below. Y'all go check out the fire-ass garments made out of 100% Egyptian cotton. I guarantee a boost your sex appeal up by, let's say, uh, 24%. And look here. If it look good on me, it's going to look good on your in-between ass, okay? And they got new drops. You see the new drops? You feel me? Oh, feel good on my skin. The logo looking fire. You feel me? And if you black, you would have heard this thing before. Hell, some of you... Some some white people might have heard this saying too. You feel me? You be asking for some dough, you as a kid, and they hit you with the, you got some money? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, but go check it out, though. Shit fire, you feel me? You know what I mean? Yeah, look, man. On that note, I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. Boy, Chris Rock was mad. See how I did that mic drop? It was like, look at that one. Damn. <laughs> this was a game. This was a game.